Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting that I am bringing you today is called Cloudy Day. It's a 4 by 6 miniature, painted it, I don't know, two or three months ago. Quite like it though. I actually have it as the background on my um, desktop monitor and uh, I think it came out pretty good. It was a, actually a bit of reference I had for quite a while. I was sort of attracted to these trees which had these like yellow flowers on them um, and uh, not the kind of thing I usually would do because it's a, I don't I, I like to do things that aren't real specific if that makes sense. I kind of have a I love of a sort of generic -y kind of landscape you know you, it's not real clear what season maybe or what time of day or <laughs> I, think I could go on and on anyway this had these um, or like I, you won't see me paint real super unique looking trees you know I like my tree I like my trees pretty standard looking you know um and so for me to do something that had like trees with yellow flowers on it, it was like kind of kind of different for me but i am real happy with the way the painting turned out and i may do it as a larger painting at some point uh, down the road um good news is that my uh the the, the new studio that uh well, i hope it's good news i hope it gets actually built but the new studio at the quarry art center that i've already um got a you know lease on um not a lease i'm paying for but you know i've already had have an agreement to is getting built and it's going to have a much larger area to paint and a, a place where i can put a stand up easel and uh and maybe do some larger work so i'm not sure how i'm going to videotape those yet uh you're going to see my my old my old bald head somewhere in there but uh balding i should say Anyway, I, I've got I've got some motifs that I think would make really nice larger paintings, and um, the deal is with like much larger work, you really can't do it sitting down. It's kind of like playing a really raucous uh, song. You might need to stand up to really rock that guitar, you know. Anyway, um, I kind of wanted to uh, do a quick uh, sort of. Um, art 101 overview today um just to kind of catch up because i have so many videos now i get a lot of requests for various information um, so i'm just going to jump in the types of boards that i paint on are what's called mdf out here and masonite in the u.s i used to work on um, actual marine ply but i found it had too much of a propensity to warp not that into canvas, although as I work larger and larger, I might make that move. Um, I spend a lot of time um, texturizing my boards because I like to work on a texture. I don't like that texture to be too heavy. I think if you look at some of my paintings from about a year ago, you'll see that. Um, and that's not to say they don't, they didn't come out good. And I just sold one the other day that was on a super heavy texture. And the lady says, oh, that's what I like about it. So <clears throat> it's a personal preference. Um, if you like really major, massive amounts of texture, then uh, you can do it. Now, there are two videos about my board prep um, technique on my channel. Just type in board prep. Um, there might be a way to pin things there, but I don't really want all that stuff on the front page of my um, channel anyway. I just like the, the most recent videos to be there. However... Uh, I've done some videos on board prep. Okay, we're moving into paints. I use oil paint. And my primary uh, paint supplier would be Gamblin. I think that's, for me, the best value for money, and best quality uh, that you can get for money. Um, I don't use Gamblin for my um, earth colors, like my raw umbers. Um, the ivory black that I use to make my basic uh, Mike's gray. Um, I uh, yellow ochre, um, burnt umber when, uh, usually I just buy burnt umber to do board prep, it's not actually on my palette. Um, 
those palette those those pigments are very cheap and so having a sort of a student grade of that is not a big deal I buy big uh, 250 um, mil tubes and that that is Georgian Daler Rowney Georgian brand uh, my palette comes flashing uh, uh, across the screen at the beginning of every video and uh, I had someone the other day tell me I'm spelling it wrong um, I don't know about that that's how I would spell it so what of a moving on brushes okay I use the I like mostly use the these tan brush you see right now that's Robert Simmons signet series um, and I use flats and I, uh, I use sizes ranging from one mostly to on up through tens uh, and twelves and things for bigger paintings um, I've also had really good success uh, with um, some brushes by DOS. It's D period, A period, S period, DOS. Um, those also, oh by the way, it's Robert Simmons is a, a hog's hair. Um, it's a natural fiber brush. You really can't get these sort of effects with a synthetic brush because they're too soft. Although I just recently am trying a pretty cool synthetic um, brush uh, that it's quite quite nice I, I was trying it yesterday I haven't formed a complete opinion on that yet but uh, um, hogs hair is where it's at at least for the kind of landscape painting I do now I will use synthetic um, uh, bristle brushes for other things like figure painting and things like that they have their uses you know and uh, what I would say to you is just make sure whatever brush you're using is a decent quality. Like these DOS brushes I mentioned, I don't know their actual series, but they're blue. Um, usually in the very small sizes, like a zero through two. Um, those are flats, those are hogs hair. And they're not dropping hairs. And that's the other thing, cheap brushes drop hairs. They're also bound in a funky way that just give you a real crappy result. A lot of the cheap brushes you can see are, uh, come from China they just have like this pale wood handles and uh, they're a dollar uh, it might be good for something I don't know what but usually those types of brushes the types of brushes you might get at a craft store as well not very good okay so we have just talked about boards paint and brushes and that only took like five minutes <laughs> Uh, well, we can move on through. I always start with the um, pre-mix. Um, some of my videos, if you're into watching me mix, go back to like, um, I want to say July, June, July, August. A lot of those videos have me showing, showing me mixing my colors um, prior to the painting session. The problem with this is that it's exceedingly boring to anyone but somebody that's really really into it and uh, what I have to say about that anyway is that um, a, a really good book by the way I'm painting Alla Prima by um, Richard Schmidt he talks a lot about uh, this uh, issue in his book and he recommends uh, he gives has a grid he's a real uh, he's a real intelligent guy uh, and has a real kind of almost intellectual approach um, and a, a, a lot of feeling in his work too, don't get me wrong. But, uh, he has these grids of colors. He recommends just sitting down and matching them with your palette and learning how to mix colors. I would prefer to learn on the job, so to speak. So I will just set out with, uh, with my colors to, to hit the marks that are in my reference or in my imagination. And my palette is complete for me. So with the palette uh, that I use, I can get almost any natural landscape type of effect. Um, but what I would have to say is that not only do you need to learn how to mix colors on your own by actually doing it instead of having someone tell you how to do it. I mean. You want the basics here you go you know yellow and red make orange yellow and green make yellow green 
<laughs> no, I mean yellow and blue make green. Okay. And blue and red make purple or violet. And then you to cancel out your colors in your mixes, you would add a complementary. So if something is too blue, you can add some orange, although it's going to ugly it up, so be careful. Um, sometimes you get a nice complementary gray. Whatever. It'll be warm, muddy. Sometimes muddy is what you want. That's fine. If something's too green, uh, you would add some red. Now, the thing is, like, actually, you can throw a lot of red into your mixtures, especially a red like burnt sienna. Try that in when you're in your greens one day and watch them get um, much more natural and realistic looking. Also, you can actually paint just blobs of red into your trees, and you'd be amazed how good that looks. It just the eye mixes it, and it just looks good. Um, what was the last one? The yellow purple thing, not that useful for uh, landscape painting, um, but uh, theoretically it works the same. If something's too yellow, you would add purple. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. You will get, and you can to get very uh, interesting sort of effects in the skies um, with yellows and purples, and you'd be amazed how well they mix together to give you a, an, a really nice range of sort of pearlescent grays. Um, and then, you know, when you bring a little red into the mix, like a burnt sienna or something, uh, uh, it can be pretty handy. Anyway, that's all you need to know about color mixing. You're done. You just start mixing, you know. The other thing I would say, um, don't have less, on your, less colors on your palette when you're starting out. It's better than too many. Uh, because you have too many uh, colors on your palette, um, you'll be struggling to have harmony in your pictures. And, um, oh, here's another great tip on uh, color mixing. So colors out of the uh, tube are too bright. They look very fake, especially blues. Um, this is why I have black on my palette. This is why I have raw umber on my palette. If it's, if it needs some killing, that color, and you want to kill it in a warm way, use raw umber. If you want to kill it in a cool way, use black. So we're getting close to the end here. This is kind of a basics uh, little talk today. I will not and cannot and I'm not interested in um, giving this information out on every single video I do, but there it is. Um, and uh, periodically I'm going to try and remember to, uh, to repeat this information for new subscribers and people that are looking for it. Um, uh, I know, I wish I was better at the whole YouTube thing. I would figure out maybe how to tag things and, and do this and that, but um, uh, there it is. And um, the best thing I can say too is if you really want to know how I paint and what I think, uh, you know, start with back in the 100 days of uh, tonalism um, in 1915, I mean 1950, 2015, and go forward from there. Anyway, I'll be back on the weekend with the Past Masters series. Uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So um, until then, please do me a favor and take good care and stay out of trouble.